more broadly. Respond very quickly, and then I'll get to my question. Why did he, he's been saying this for four years? Show us. Just show us. Stop playing around. You've been saying for four Everybody years you're going to reduce your taxes. Nobody knows it, Mr. President. What they do okay. know is you're not paying your taxes or you're paying taxes that are so low. When last time he said what he paid, he said, I only pay that little because I'm smart. I know how to game the system. Come on. Come on, folks. So, President Trump, and then I want to get to two questions to both of you sure. on this. I was put through a phony witch hunt for three years. It started before I even got elected. They spied on my campaign. No president should ever have to go through what I went through. Let me just say this. Mueller and 18 angry Democrats and FBI agents all over the place spent $48 million. They went through everything I had, including my tax returns, and they found absolutely no collusion and nothing wrong. Forty-eight million. I guarantee you, if I spent one million on you, Joe, I could find plenty wrong. Because right. the kind of things that you've done and the kind of monies that your family has taken, I mean, your brother made money in Iraq. Let me Millions of dollars. Your other bro brother made a fortune. And it's all through you, Joe. And they say you get some of it. And you do live very well. You have houses all over the place. You live very well. I don't think Joe Biden is getting a cut of what his brother's getting. But I do agree that his brother has used government contracts to, um, like, make himself very rich. I mean, didn't your brother get hired very high up in a construction firm or something like that. He has a massive man mansion in Florida, or at least he was selling it the last time I heard. Um. All right, gentlemen, let me just ask oh, some man. questions about all of this broadly. Vice President Biden, there have been questions about the work your son has done in China and for a Ukrainian energy company when you were vice president. In retrospect, was anything about those relationships inappropriate or unethical? Nothing was unethical. Here's what the deal. With regard to Ukraine, we had this whole question about whether or not, because he was on the board, I later learned of a Burisma, a company, that somehow I had done something wrong. Yet every single solitary person when he was going through his impeachment, testifying under oath who worked for him, said, I did my job impeccably. I carried out U.S. policy. Not one single solitary thing was out of line. The problem is the policy that you took. You decided to throw your kid, who is a very political person, no matter what you think, in the middle of a war that we shouldn't be involved in. Because, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't think we're the world's police. I think that um, we're going to go in and kick some people's ass and take their oil because um, that's what we're, we're going to have to do. I mean, that's just reality of, of being a human being that lives on this planet that wants to make sure they have oil so they survive and so they have food. We're going to go kick some people's ass. But what I'm telling you is that I'm not trying to be the world police. I'm not trying to get involved with Ukraine because I know they're lobbyists and I'm friends with them. I'm not deciding that I'm friends with everyone. I, I, I'm deciding exactly whose side I'm going to be on because I want to make sure that our country does well. And I know, make America great again, make, t make America first or whatever. That's what we're going to do. We're going to care about America first. That's your, your stance. That's what you say your stance is. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes you have very, very, very complicated business connections, and that's just the truth. Not a single thing, number one. Number two, the guy who got in trouble in Ukraine was this guy trying to bribe the Ukrainian government to say something negative about me, which they would not do and did not do because it never, ever, ever happened. My son has not made money in terms of this thing about, uh, what are you talking about, China. I have not had it. The only guy made money from China is this guy. He's the only one. Nobody else has made money from China. Never President deal, Trump, deal with let, China. Me, let me By ask way, my question to you. But and could I just one, one thing? Very quickly. His son didn't have a job for a long time, was sadly no longer in the military service. I won't get into that. And he didn't have a job. As soon as he became vice president, Burisma, not the best, look, not the best reputation in the world, I hear they paid him 183000 a month. Listen to this. 
183, and they gave him a $3 million upfront payment. All right. And he had no I, energy I'm going to let the Vice President That's respond to that quickly, and then dishonest. I need to get to a question to you very quickly. No quick, basis for President. that. Everybody investigated that. No one said anything he did was wrong in Ukraine. Okay. President Trump, this is for you. Since you took office, you've never divested from your... We live in an America... We live in America, and in America, what's wrong or what's unethical and what's illegal are two different things. So I think we all need to take a moment to decide, is it ethical for Hunter Biden, who apparently is a recovering crack addict, to take a job making $183,000 a month after a $3 million bonus um, from a foreign government that's not a NATO, NATO ally that just got invaded by what, who I would consider a superpower. Russia is a super superpower. So, um, I, I mean, the ethics of it, some people would actually consider it very ethical. He was standing up for the Ukrainian people. And let's face it, um, it wasn't a terrible thing to do, but um, was it ethical? It depends on who you ask business. You've personally promoted your properties abroad. A report this week, which was referenced, does indicate that your company has a bank account in China. So how can voters know that you don't have any foreign conflicts of interest? I have many bank accounts, and they're all listed, and they're all over the place. I mean, I was a businessman doing business. The bank account you're referring to, which is everybody knows about it, it's listed. The bank account was in 2013. That's what it was. It was opened and do it was closed in 2015, I believe. And then I decided because I was going to do I was thinking about doing a deal in China like millions of other people. I was thinking about it and I decided I'm not going to do it. Didn't like it. I decided not to do it. Had an account open and I closed it. Okay. Excuse me. And then unlike him where he's vice president and he does business I then decided to run for president after that. That was before. So I closed it before I even ran for president, let alone became president. Big difference. He is the vice president of the United States, and his son, his brother, and his other brother are getting rich. They're like a vacuum cleaner. They're sucking okay, up money president every Trump, place Thank you. Goes. We do Not need to true. move on. I do want to ask you, uh, Vice President Biden, about China. Let's talk about China more broadly. There have, of course, President Trump has said that they should pay for not being fully transparent in regards to the coronavirus. If you were president, would you make China pay? And please be specific, what would that look like? What I'd make China do is play by the international rules, not like he has done. He has caused the deficit of China to go up, not down, with China, up, not down. We are making sure that in order to do business in China, you have to give all your intellectual property, you have to get a, have a partner in China, it's 51 percent. We would not do that at all, number one. Number two, we're in a... I got bored, so I'm going to step in here. Donald Trump left the World Health Organization because I don't know what, because he ha didn't want to do what they said, or he didn't want to... Um, have, Ameri have the United States contribute to the World Health Organization anymore. He left the World Health Organization during COVID-19. The World Health Organization is for the world. The CDC is for the United States. So um, Donald Trump decided he doesn't want to work with the biggest um, group of people that he should have been working with. And I think that's just negligence. And so um, if I... In president, am I going to be tough on China? Um, it depends on the situation, and some situations are not the same as other situations. And as far as um, COVID nineteen goes, and, and that situation, the last thing I would be is tough on them because they were in at the beginning. They they've been working on it the longest. They are very talented people, no matter what you think about the Chinese. They are freaking talented, so you should never underestimate the Chinese. So um, Donald Trump underestimates them. Donald Trump, who knows how much he had in the bank account? Who knows why he had that much money in the bank account? Um, I'd be curious to actually know the true story behind it. Um, but all I know is I don't want to fight the Chinese. I want to work with them. I want to join the World Health Organization again. I think we should all want to join the World Health Organization again. Situation where China would have to play by the rules internationally as well. When I met with Xi, 
that and uh, when I was still vice president, he said we're setting up air identification zones in the in the South China Sea. You can't fly through them. I said we're going to fly through them. We just flew B-52, B-1 bombers through it. We're not going to pay attention. They have to play by the rules. And what's he do? He embraces guys like the thugs, like in North Korea and. And, uh, and the Chinese president and Putin and others. And he pokes his finger in the eye of all of our friends, all of our allies. We make up only, we were 25 percent, 25 percent of the world's economy. We need to be having the rest of our friends with us saying to China, these are the rules. You play by them or you're going to pay the. We're 5 percent of the world's population. Not just are we 25 percent of the world's economy, but we're 5 percent of the world's population and that means we're five percent of the world's brain power and you can say what you want about the united states is the smartest we're not always the smartest the people in charge of a lot of these american corporations that did these incredible things with the computers a lot of the time they're from other countries like the guy who taught me so much about programming who's like one of those brilliant programmers in the world uh, he is not american he's german and swiss so um we need the entire world working on COVID-19. We want to be a part of the world that's working on COVID-19 with the world because if the world finds a cure, we want to be a part of that. So um, I think we need to get back in the World Health Organization. I don't, I don't, I don't understand you. Price for not paying by them economically. That's the way I will run it. And that's what we did in upholding steel tariffs and a range of other things when we were president and vice president. All right, let's talk about oh, North oh, Korea. Oh, oh, excuse let's, me, no, I have to yes. respond to that. Okay, very quickly. And the then we're going to move on to North Korea. with a billion and a half dollars from China to not manage after true. spending 10 minutes in office and being in Air Force Two, number one. Number two, there's a very strong email talking about your family wanting to make $10 million a year for introductions. President introductions. Trump, on China Not policy, true. though, what no, specifically no, are you going to do? What specifically are you going to do to make China pay? You've said you're going to make all, them pay. First of all, China is paying. They're paying billions and billions of dollars. I just gave $28 New billion. Dollars New sanctions? I just gave $28 billion to our farmers. Taxpayers' China, money. It's what? Taxpayers' money. Didn't no, come no, from yeah, China. You know who the taxpayer is? It's called China. China Not paid true. $28 billion, and you know what they did to pay it, Joe? They devalued their currency, and they also paid up. And you know who got the money? Our farmers, our great farmers, because they were targeted. You never charged them anything. Also, I charged them 25 percent on dumped steel because they were killing our steel industry. We were not going to have a steel industry. Okay. And now we have a steel okay. industry. Okay. Vice President Biden, your response, please. My response is, look, this isn't about... I'm going to be a politician for a second. I am for the American steel industry. I'm for the world steel industry, but I'm for using that steel to do something productive. I'm for using that steel to build sustainable cities in the desert that don't require oil. I know everyone's going, he's against the oil industry, blah, 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 blah. I am for making sure that we're fine when the oil in industry can't get any more oil. The last thing I'm against is the oil industry. I'm about to invade freaking Saudi Arabia. I'm about to invade Iran. Are you crazy? How in the world can I be against the oil industry if I want to invade everyone with freaking oil? So yeah, I'm for the oil industry, but I'm also for making sure that we are good when we're out of when we run out of oil, and that's why I need the steel industry working with me. I need the people from the steel industry helping us build these sustainable cities, and maybe someday if we can figure out how to um, create enough heat, then maybe we'll be able to make steel with the sun. But I, I mean, I can't imagine. But Dare to dream. There's a reason why he's bringing up all this malarkey. There's a reason for it. He doesn't want to talk about the, the, the substantive issues. It's not about his family and my family. It's about your family. And your family's hurting badly. If you're making less than, if you're a middle class family, you're getting hurt badly right now. You're sitting at the kitchen table this morning deciding, well, we can't get new tires, they're bald because we have to wait another month or so. Or are we going to be able to pay the mortgage? Or who's going to tell her she can't go back to, to community college? They're the decisions you're making in the middle class families like I grew up in Scranton and Claymont. They're in trouble. We should be talking about your families, but that's the last thing he wants to talk about.
I want to, I want to talk about statement. North Korea. Me, I do want to second, turn to please. 10 seconds, Mr. President, That's 10 seconds. That's a typical seconds. political statement. Let's get off this China thing. And then he looks, the family, around the table, everything. Just right. a typical politician when I see that. Let's talk I'm about North Korea. I'm not a typical Korea politician. Okay, That's President. why I got elected. That let's was, talk Let's about get off the subject of China. Let's talk around, sitting around the table. All right. Come on, Joe, you can we're, do better. We're going to talk about North Korea now. I'm going to talk about North Korea. So North Korea has a lot of people in charge. It's not just Kim Jong-un. And North Korea has a complicated history, but North Korea is changing a lot. And at some point, um, people act in accordance with your expectations. Um, if you expect them to be your enemy, if you treat them like your enemy, if you're terrible to them, if you're constantly telling people that you're, they're your enemy, they're going to be your enemy. And someone constantly tells China they're their enemy. And someone's friends constantly tell China that they're their enemy. And some people feel like China treats them like they are their enemy sometimes. Because let's face it, when you're behind the scenes and you're dealing with the cyber attacks and you're dealing with these, this like computer warfare, sometimes it starts to feel like you're at war. And sometimes that can bias you, and sometimes you have to get over that. But what I'm trying to say is, um, I'm for getting over our past relationship with North Korea. I'm for changing the way that we interact with North Korea. I think Kim Yo Jong is awesome. I think, I mean, I think that if you if you listen to her propaganda, she doesn't think Americans are awesome. But I think she's trying to turn North Korea into the country she wants to live in. And she has a lot of respect for China and some of these other countries where they have an atheist secular society, where they don't have a theocracy, where they don't have a group, like an entire country who has trouble with science because of the God problem. And so I think we should be on North Korea's side. I'm more on South Korea's side because they're my homies and they do awesome stuff. I mean, Samsung's such an incredible company. There are a lot of incredible companies out there. Um, but um, I'm for changing the way we interact with people. And I think that that starts with changing the way, um, or I'm for changing the way we interact with people because it will change the way that they interact with us. President Trump, you've met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un three times. You've talked about your beautiful letters with him. You've touted the fact that there hasn't been a war or a long-range missile test. And yet North Korea recently rolled out its biggest ever intercontinental ballistic missile and continues to develop its new... One more thing. Donald Trump called Kim Jong-un morbidly obese. He's constantly calling him Rocket Man. He's constantly teasing this guy. He's constantly like jabbing at him in a mean way because someone calls me morbidly obese. Do you think I'm ever going to like them? No. So this guy's a master at negotiations, right? Everyone knows Donald Trump is who you want to do the negotiation. He's done like Park Avenue deals. Donald Trump is who you trust for the negotiation. So, but wait. He's a massive negotiator, but he calls the guy that he's negotiating with morbidly obese, and he's constantly insulting him. So I'm just trying to figure this out here. How much of a master, master negotiator is this guy? It seems like he's not. It seems like he is someone who is mean to the point that he doesn't know how to negotiate if the deal gets anywhere outside of his control. Develop its nuclear arsenal. Do you see that as a betrayal of the relationship you no. forged? Just 30 seconds here because we need to get on to the next So segment. when I met with Barack Obama, we sat in the White House right at the beginning, had a great conversation. It was supposed to be 15 minutes and it was well over an hour. He said the biggest problem we have with North is North Korea. He indicated we will be in a war with North Korea. Guess what? It would be a nuclear war. And he does have plenty of nuclear capability. In the meantime, I have a very good relationship with him. Different kind of a guy, but he probably thinks the same thing about me. We have a different kind of a relationship. We have a very good relationship, and there's no war. And you know, about oh, two months ago, he broke into a certain area. They said, oh, there's going to be trouble. I said, no, they're not, because he's not going to do that. And I was right. Look, instead of being in a war where millions of people, Seoul, you know, is 25 miles away, millions and millions, 32 million people in Seoul, Millions of people would be okay. dead right now. President we Trump, don't have that's a war, 30 and seconds. I have a good Thank relationship. you. Vice President Biden, to you, North Korea conducted four nuclear tests under the Obama administration. Why do you think you would be able to rein in this persistent threat? Because right I'd now? make it clear, which we were making clear to China, they had to be part of the deal. Because here's the re I made it clear and as a spokesperson of the administration when I went to China that they said, Why are you moving your missile defense up so close? Why are you moving more forces here? Why are you continuing to do uh, um, 
military maneuvers with South Korea. I said, because North Korea is a problem, and we're going to continue to do it so we can control them. We're going to make sure we can control them and make sure they cannot hurt us. And so if you want to do something about it, step up and help. If not, it's going to continue. What has he done? He's legitimized North Korea. He's talked about his good buddy, who's a thug, a thug, and he talks about how we're better off. And they are, have much more capable missiles, able to reach U.S. territory much more easily than ever did before. Let me follow up with you, Vice President Biden. You've said you... Not every problem needs a military solution. And I know you're going, well, they got missiles that can reach... It. Okay, do you know that Kim Jong-un knows that his country would get nuked like crazy, but that he would also start a massive war in the South China Sea, which would result in a very difficult stalemate for everyone? Because, I don't know if people realize this, North Korea and China, according to a Chinese general, are like tongue and lips. They're best friends. They fought together during the Korean War. They have uh, resisted the American capitalist um, like dominance that has been unfair in a lot of circumstances. Um, they've, they've done it together. So, um, they're, they're pretty good friends, and so we all should... Be honest, um, if a war broke out, broke out uh, in the South China Sea, um, our forces would be done for, at least in that area, and their forces would be very, very, very poor, bad off, and space would probably um, be a bunch of broken satellites because people would start shooting down one another's satellites. So um, this whole bragging about avoiding that kind of war, wow, um, but... That's 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 really impressive. I, I'm really impressed by you, especially considering that I'm the one that's doing the propaganda that is um, changing our relationship with North Korea, that is making North Korea um, think differently about the situation. You're not. So, I mean, I think I should actually have credit for that. You said you wouldn't meet with Kim Jong-un without preconditions. Are there any conditions under which you would meet with him? On the condition that he would agree that he would be drawing down his nuclear capacity to get that the Korean Peninsula should be nuclear-free zone. All right, let's move on to American families. President, they tried Very to quickly, meet with 10 him. Seconds, President. They tried to meet with him. He I wouldn't didn't. do it. He didn't like Obama. He didn't like him. He wouldn't do it. The Korean Peninsula is a nuclear free zone, or it should be. Does South Korea not have nukes? Does South Korea not have nukes? I'm wondering, like, how do you guys, how does South Korea not have nukes? Because I, I want South Korea to have nukes if they don't have nukes. Like, South Korea is actually my friend, so um, we can say we're going to keep it in a nuke-free zone. Why don't we keep it a nuke, nuked-out zone? Because um, North Korea is going to have their nukes. T try to tell me that I can't have a gun when my life's in danger. Why? To try to tell me not to experiment with advanced science. Try to tell me, no, you're the type of person that could go figure out nuclear fission, like, in your, like, spare time, but... Like, you live in a country that doesn't have nuclear power. You think nuclear power might save the planet someday. No, don't worry about having nuclear fish, no, nuclear power someday. You don't need it. Trust me. Trust the, Amer the Americans will take care of you. Go burn your oil. So all I'm saying is, like, we can all, we can all act like um, we're showing respect to, country, uh, to other countries um, that aren't American, but we're not. Because I think North Korea... Um, there's nothing wrong with them wanting to become advanced in science. And we have to stop thinking of the problem as a um, get rid of their nukes problem. And we need to start thinking of a problem of the problem as um, how can we change our relationship with North Korea? And, and how can we think different about how, uh, uh, at least about, about World War III? Because we need to do World War III. And I know no one wants to do it, but we need to. At some point, we're going to have to. Okay, you know, gotta give him a chance tried, to respond to that before we do move it. on. You and that's why. okay. You know what, North Korea? We're not in a war. We have a good relationship. You know, people don't understand. Having a good relationship Trump, with leaders of other countries is a, a good country. thing. We have a lot of questions to get yes. to. Not Your response. Saying we had a good relationship with Hitler before he, in fact, invaded Europe, the rest of Europe. Come on. The reason he would not meet with President Obama is because President Obama said, we're going to talk about denuclearization. We're not going to legitimize you, and we're going to continue to put stronger and stronger. Okay, the reason that he didn't meet with President Obama is because Obama, initially he was saying he's going to meet with people without preconditions, right? That's what he's saying, because Bush didn't, because Bush wouldn't meet with North Korea. He was like, I'm not going to legitimize this guy's presidency. 
Um, but I think he was talking about Kim Jong Il back then, though. I'm not 100 percent sure when Kim Jong Il died. Um, but I know that George Bush was the one that really had that policy. We're not going to talk with our enemies um, because we're too good for them. I disagreed with that. Obama disagreed with that. Apparently, Obama changed his opinion on that because um, he wanted to have like we're going to have an itinerary for our talk. And in my opinion, my itinerary is um, we're going to have fun. And then we're going to go hang out with some people and we're going to have fun. And then we're going to have fun. And then we're going to have fun. And that's my itinerary. itinerary. You guys want to have an itinerary that's like, I'm going to piss you off. I'm going to piss you off. I'm going to piss you off. And then you, so yeah, you can meet with me, but here's, here's our list. I'm going to piss you off. Why would you want to piss people off? Why wouldn't you want to like create an environment where deals happen? And that's what I'm, why I'm confused. Like the reason Donald Trump is, is, is the artist uh, has the art of the deal. The reason he's such a good deal maker is because he's so freaking good at golf and people don't understand it. That guy is good at golf and like he gets insulted by people that are like columnists for ESPN. Oh yeah, I could beat him in golf. Oh yeah, he, we're going to count every stroke. I bet he cheats. N like the only thing you should know is Donald Trump is a very serious golfer. That guy has golfed a lot and he does a lot of deals. But all I'm saying is the reason he does deals is because people enjoy golfing with him. Apparently Donald Trump is someone that is enjoyable to golf with. And um, I don't understand why the Democrats can't be enjoyable people. Sanctions on you. That's why he wouldn't meet with us. All right, let's and it didn't move happen. on. Let's Excuse move me. on and talk he about American families. He left me families. a mess, Kristen. President Trump, okay, we they do need to move on. They left me a mess. North Korea was a mess. We and need in to fact, move if you so remember the first two or three months, tonight, there was a very Trump. dangerous period of my first three months before we sort of worked things out a little bit. Okay. There was a very day. They left us a mess. And Obama would be, I think, the first to say it was the single biggest problem he thought that our country. Okay, would. let's move on to American families and the economy. One of the issues that's most important to them is health care, as you both know. Today, there was a key vote on a new Supreme Court Justice, Amy Coney Barrett, and health care is at the center of her confirmation fight. Over 20 million Americans get their health insurance through the Affordable Care Act. It's headed to the Supreme Court, and your administration, Mr. President, is advocating for the court to overturn it. If the Supreme Court does overturn that law, those 20 million Americans could lose their health insurance almost overnight. So what would you do if those people have their health insurance taken away? You have two minutes uninterrupted. Sure. First of all, I've already done something that nobody thought was possible. Through the legislature, I terminated the individual mandate. That is the worst part of Obamacare, as we call it. The individual mandate where you have to pay a fortune for the privilege of... I know I was confusing in the first debate when I talked about how the individual mandate is kind of in con is like in it, it juxtaposes the idea of uh, everyone being covered like where you don't have to worry about getting coverage if you have uh, if you have pre-existing conditions because um, if insurance cover if insurance companies cover you when you have pre-existing conditions they know that they're gonna lose money like it, so you have to have a way to cover that money and the way to cover that money according to the Obamacare situation, was the individual mandate. And so um, that, uh, that's what I was trying to say in the first debate. Um, in my opinion, Donald Trump is trying to give everyone everything at the same time. And Joe Biden is trying to give everyone everything at the same time, but he's trying to tell everyone everything that they want to hear, actually. Um, but he's also, I mean, it's, he um, is trying to say that he's going to stick it to the rich people at the same time. So he's not trying to give everyone everything they want. He's trying to say he's going to stick it to the rich people, but the rich people sure are backing him. So, um, all I'm saying is I think both sides have bad plans for dealing with healthcare because they want to cover pre-existing conditions. They don't want to have an individual mandate. They want wall street bankers to continue taking billions of dollars out of the health insurance industry, constantly and putting it in their offshore bank accounts where they're not even taxed, it's just hidden money. I'm serious, you have no idea how much money people have in offshore bank accounts. It's unbelievable. And so um, that's what everyone wants to make sure everyone can continue doing. I want to change that. I want to have a government takeover of the healthcare industry. And by, the way I would do that is by buying out, say, uh, half a trillion dollars worth of insurance companies, hiring all their employees, using that company um, to really... Um, push a high quality insurance company that covers a lot of people and that, um, that, oh, sorry, I got distracted for a second there. Um, 
that co- that that um, make, get, keeps the premiums down. So um, I would pump a lot of money into this company, and and my competitors would not be able to stay in business. So I would end up hiring a lot of people from uh, other insurance companies that don't get bought out. But um, I would drop prices a lot. I would buy out um, manufacturers of um, generic drugs um, to try to lower the prices of drugs. But I would also make deals with foreign governments, just like Donald Trump has done, to su- supply us with drugs because um, the last thing Americans will ever do is outmanufacture um, certain countries like China and uh, India even. Um, so uh, th- their, their price of labor is so low. If we want to keep our medicine um, prices low, we need to think of our economy as an international economy where we have the entire world's workforce that is contributing, and it's not just the American workforce. So I'm, I'm with Donald Trump on making sure that uh, we make really good deals with drug manufacturers from other countries where the labor is a lot less expensive. Just- not having to pay for bad health insurance. I terminate it. It's gone. Now it's in court because Obamacare is no good. But then I made a decision. Run it as well as you can to my people, great people. Run it as well as you can. I could have gone the other route and made everybody very unhappy. They ran it. Uh, Premiums are down. Everything's down. Here's the problem. No matter how well you run it, it's no good. What we'd like to do is terminate it. We have the individual mandate done. I don't know that it's going to work. If we don't win, we will have to run it and we'll have Obamacare, but it'll be better run. But it no longer is Obamacare because without the individual mandate, it's much different. Pre-existing conditions will always stay. What I would like to do is a much better health care, much better, will always protect people with pre-existing. So I'd like to terminate Obamacare, come up with a brand new, beautiful health care. The Democrats will do it because there'll be tremendous pressure on them and we might even have the House. I want to say something. So I'm not against rich people. You know why? Because for a lot of rich people like Bill Gates, his money sits in the bank account and protects the American economy. He, he, his money is out owning stocks that protect the American economy. Um, Warren Buffett, his money, it, he's not sitting there uh, consuming a lot of resources. He has his money out taking care of people. So I'm not the guy that wants to punish all the rich people. I'm not sitting here, I'm going to go take it to the rich people person. I am a person that believes that we need to make sure we protect the environment. And if a rich person's a threat to the environment, we need to destroy them. And I don't think it's just the super rich. I think it's anyone that's a threat to the environment. And so my philosophy is, um, I don't care if you're rich. Oh, you're a billionaire? Don't give a crap. Congratulations, you're a billionaire. Don't destroy the planet and I won't destroy you. Other people, it seems like everyone's afraid to try to save the planet, like to, to, to bother people, to, to, to set up a system where you can tax people based on their consumption. Because at some point we do need to realize that the world does have a finite amount of re- resources and there are a, a lot of people on the planet and we need the planet long term. By that time, and I think we're going to win the house, okay? You'll see, but I think we're gonna win the house. But come up with a better health care always protecting people with pre-existing conditions. And one thing very important, we have 180 million people out there that have great private health care, far more than we're talking about with Obamacare. Joe Biden is going to terminate all of those policies. These are people that love their health care, people that have been successful, middle-income people, been successful. They have 100... I would like to talk about Brock Pierce because Brock Pierce is a cryptocurrency person who's a billionaire, um, from cryptocurrency, and how, how is he a billionaire from burning electricity so that he can have a, a medium of exchange, uh, w- which is um, so that he can have a currency. And so cryptocurrency, I don't know if people realize it, um, it's created by massive amounts of electricity being used to find a hash that can be used as the beginning of a block, um, and that block's in a ledger, that you can that 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 um ha, that is used to do transactions. So it's a very like a transactions a, a complicated process from an algorithm perspective. I'm not going to explain it, but um, there's a way to do transactions based on the computer code, and the the way of doing transactions keeps uh, you safe and it allows people to exchange currency, um, even 
even though they are not using a bank account. So, um, I feel like people that are billionaires off cryptocurrency are a problem. And that's why I've said Facebook has to be done. Facebook needs to be terminated. Not Facebook, Facebook Facebook's Libra. Like the, well, Facebook has obviously been involved with some things that they need to be held accountable for, like censorship, like in, in a way that it was, was um, they need to be held accountable for. But I'm actually talking about their cryptocurrency because Facebook is talking about having a currency that is constantly going up in value that makes people want to buy it. So it's an investment vehicle and people give them a bunch of money for nothing. Actually, they're giving them a bunch of money for electricity that was generated in order to find a small piece of computer code that is connected to other computer code. And so um, I understand everyone wants that computer code because it's worth so much, but you have to understand that computer code is a Ponzi scheme. And at some point, like it's only as good as the amount of money in the bank account. They need money in that bank account because if there's a run on the bank, that, that money's worth nothing. It's, 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 it's worth nothing like, unless it has a, has a reason, like unless it's like, actually being used as a medium of exchange. And a lot of people aren't using it as a medium of exchange, but some people are, especially for the drug business. And that's why certain people are very, very rich in the cryptocurrency business. And that's why the cryptocurrency business does have value because it has um, something that it's pegged to. Just like um, the dollar used to be pegged to the gold, to gold, to the price of gold, the gold standard, you know? Um, before World War II, I think that was Roosevelt. And um, that was a very important to, to go off a gold standard because it, it allowed the Fed to add liquidity into the market because before the amount of dollars had a relationship with the amount of gold. And so the amount of dollars was based off mining. But um, if you had population growth or something like that, you, can't, you couldn't adjust the amount of dollars in the system in order to deal with the, um, the amount of effort that's actually being put out of the system. Because uh, uh, what, what is an economy? You know, it's a very complicated ve vehicle. Like what makes a, a, an economy go up? A, a lot of things, but one of the things is um, population growth. Because if there are more people that are included in the economy, there are more people to buy. There's, uh, and, and so, but there are a lot of things that make an economy what it is. And so what I'm telling you is that if, if you have a cryptocurrency and um, it becomes a very major medium of exchange, what you can have is like um, massive amounts of inflation, right? Um, isn't that like when the price uh, of, uh, when like the price of things, when like, the, like because, because think of it, um, you can't add liquidity unless you change the code. So you can add a fork and th that would change, that's exactly what they'd have to do is they would have to add a fork and um, that would allow them to, that would allow the miners to mine more money, but then that money would go to who? Um, whoever has the miners set up. And so other people get in on the mining. Um, and that's why what I talked about with my cryptocurrency is having a secret algorithm where no one knows the miners but me, or no, no one knows the mining algorithm but me or but the government. It's secret. We mine all our cryptocurrency. And that way we don't have to use electricity. Because I know all, all you guys are going, how are you a green person? And you're for having your own cryptocurrency. Well, it's because my mining al algorithm would be secret. I wouldn't let people mine for my cryptocurrency. I would um, let people buy my cryptocurrency. Um, and I would the, the cryptocurrency, we would make it a very easy medium of exchange. But it would, um, it, it would definitely not be mined outside of the government. 